Tensions are rising in Iran. The election has ended in controversy. What are you doing? Fighting back! You're gonna get killed, come on! You have a real weapon and you choose not to use it. Who approached who in terms of making your story um, come to life on, on film? And how you decided to actually adapt it and direct it. When I came out of prison, I went on The Daily Show and I met John and we talked about doing a film together, but we did not know what John's role was going to be. Producer I think or, the book yeah. as well. And I was, yeah, I had just started writing the book. I had written an article for Newsweek magazine. And then we talked to different writers, different directors, and people were procrastinating, people were waiting. And after two years, I guess, we came to a mutual decision that uh, we really cannot wait because this is not right. like, honey, I shrunk the kids, that you can't shrink the kids at, at any, any point, in, point history. in history. This was a very timely story and it had to be done quickly. Stand up. We are here now. Sir, can you tell me why I'm here? That's what happened to foreign spies caught on Iranian soil. You are a spy. It was a really short shooting schedule that you had uh, in Jordan, I think five weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and also during Ramadan. What Correct. were the kind of biggest challenges of filming in such a short period of time? I think that the way I sort of described it to the, to the crew that I was going to take over, and we took over a very minimal crew, we're going to film 30 day shoot in five weeks. Uh, it's going to be 100 degrees. Most of the crew we're working with is going to be fasting. The Syrian war has just started probably about 45 miles from where we're going to be. But the good news is I've never done this before. So, you know, I think everybody, it felt like everybody signed up for Outward Bound. And their expertise was crucial. So that was the largest challenge, I think, was, was a translation challenge. Literally and figuratively, the crew spoke Arabic. Um, I speak in broken Yiddish. So we had to, we had to combine those. Who are you working for? The CIA? Newsweek. Am I six? He will tell them nothing. There's nothing to tell. Where's Anton Chekhov? Anton Chekhov? The, the playwright? Yeah, you tell me. It is you who has listed the interest of him on Facebook. Obviously, the story has a personal residence for John Stewart. But uh, what made you want to become involved in it and tell Maziar's story to kind of new audiences? I got approached by John um, with the, the book. I mean, not there wasn't the script yet when, when he. Or, I mean, there was a script being developed, but um, but it was more the, the story and more or less the explanation of what he wanted to do. And uh, what I what it resonated in me was that uh, it is not only about the specifics of Maziar's story and and uh, what happened in Iran in those days, but it's about. Uh, this, I mean, massive institutionalized uh, persecution that exists against journalists all over the world. Uh, it is not a specific thing of Iran. It, it's, it's happening everywhere in many shapes and forms. And, uh, and Masyar came out of prison thinking and realizing that uh, solitary confinement is a way of torture and, and solitary confinement is accepted everywhere. You must not just take his blood. You must take his hope. Your wife will never see you again. Your child, your child will never know you. Yeah, but the film is really not only about journalism, it's about family, it's about yes. love. And most of the things that we talked about through the process of writing the right. script was about families, about normal people. And also showing Iranian people as real people, not two-dimensional Iron Man type characters that right. uh, you see that. They are evil, you go there, you kill them, you see them, you kill them, and you go back home. It's not like that. They are three-dimensional characters, they have families, they have feelings, they have, they're right. real people. I, I think one of the things that really struck me about the book was that, and reading about, you know, his father was arrested and tortured by the Shah. His sister was arrested and tortured by Khomeini. He was arrested and tortured by Khamenei. It's watching this cycle of violence, whether it be through uh, Western allied power or not, and then you begin to realize the ubiquity of all, you know, we're all very cognizant right now of these atrocities being, uh, you know, perpetrated on, on, on journalists. But there is a much more ubiquitous, lower level uh, atrocity being committed every day. And some of it is not the types of torture porn that we see circulated 
it's the atrocity of, of solitary. And we do it in the United States with it's an institution. prisoners. It's, an, it's, it's a bureaucratized torture. And that, the, the film tries to focus a little bit on that. They locked you up, but you're still free. In their hearts, they know they cannot win.